The Antikythera Mechanism For the first artifact, let's head to a shipwreck and find a device that could be the ancient world's answer to a high-grade tech gadget. The Antikythera Mechanism, discovered off the coast of the Greek island Antikythera in 1901, is a fascinating relic from around 100 BCE. This bronze gadget, about the size of a shoebox, is packed with gears and dials and is often dubbed the world's first analog computer. The wreckage caused the discovery of multiple relics, which overshadowed this dysmorphic chunk of metal and bronze. It wasn't until 1902 that ancient Greeks studied this artifact, which would soon turn out to be a vital instrument for studying the universe. The machine initially collapsed into three parts, but was later studied and used to track the movement of celestial bodies, predict eclipses, and possibly even the Olympic Games. Despite being over 2,000 years old, it represented the technological complexity that wouldn't be replicated for centuries. Modern researchers have studied its workings through X-ray imaging and discovered a sophisticated connection between astronomy and engineering. It's as if the ancient Greeks were reaching out to the stars with their version of a smart device. The Antikythera mechanism not only sparked the curiosity of researchers in the 19th century, but continues to amaze us to this day. Its unique nature, with its 30 gears, was so innovative that no other invention came close for the next 1,500 years. Hard to believe, right? The Voynich Manuscript There is a mysterious book that no one can read. Not even the brightest codebreakers? No, this is not a trick question or a riddle. This is the story of the Voynich Manuscript, a medieval artifact that surfaced in 1912 when a Polish book dealer named Wilfred Voynich discovered it. This manuscript is filled with bizarre illustrations of strange plants, astronomical diagrams, and scenes that seem straight from a fairy tale. The text was written in an unknown script that failed every translation attempt. Dated to the early 15th century, it has stumped scholars, cryptographers, and linguists for over a century. Some theories suggest it could be a herbal guide, a secret code, or even an elaborate hoax. In fact, William Newbold claimed in 1921 that the transcripts were basically minute symbols that could be decoded with hyper-magnification. However, it wasn't too long before his confident claim died down. The manuscript's origins and purpose remain a mystery, making it a favorite subject for conspiracy theorists and historians. Stored at Yale University's Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library, the Voynich Manuscript continues challenging researchers with an undeciphered script. Despite technological advances, the manuscript remains an unsolved puzzle, making us wonder about the mind behind its creation. What were they thinking when they composed a book that would become a global mystery? Is it a wondrous secret waiting to be unlocked? Or is it just a medieval form of doodling? No one knows. The Phaistos Disc While the Voynich Manuscript is the epitome of curiosity in history, it is not the only artifact yet cracked. The Phaistos Disc is a piece of history that reads like an ancient mystery novel. Unearthed in 1908 at the Minoan Palace of Phaistos on the island of Crete, it is a magical artifact dating back to around 1700 BCE. This circular clay disc, about 6 inches in diameter, is imprinted on both sides with 241 symbols arranged in a spiral pattern. These symbols consist of 45 unique characters, unlike any known writing system, and their meaning remains a mystery. Some speculate they could be a form of early printing, a religious artifact, or a board game. The Minoans, known for their artistic and architectural achievements, crafted the disc with a technique that suggests high intelligence and sophistication. The artifact got its name after the Phaistos Complex, a palace of the Bronze Age. This castle's identity was its complex architecture, which was the kind that only Minoans could make. Hence, the disc remains a reminder of the fantastic architectural skills that Minoans were masters at. However, the skill might have been a bit too good since, despite numerous attempts to decode its symbols, the disc remains uncracked. It has become a piece of history that has sparked debates and inspired theories for over a century. The Baghdad Battery For a long time, we were under the impression that electricity was a modern invention, a phenomenon that modern scientists discovered. However, the Baghdad Battery tells a different story. It is living proof that even the ancients tinkered with electricity. The Baghdad battery, discovered in the 1930s near Baghdad, could be an ancient version of a battery. This curious artifact, dating back to the Parthian and Sasanian period, around 200 BCE to 650 CE, 
consists of a clay jar, a copper cylinder, and an iron rod. It might generate a small electric charge when filled with an acidic liquid like vinegar. Some suggest it was used for electroplating, while others are convinced of its spiritual or medicinal purposes. Although skeptics argue it wasn't a battery, since there is no evidence of wires or conductors, the idea that ancient people experimented with electricity is electrifying. Thus, while the primary purpose of the Baghdad battery is unknown, our ancestors might have been more creative than we give them credit for. The Crystal Skulls Put some adventure music in the background, because these mysterious crystal skulls could be straight out of an action movie. The crystal skulls, made from a clear or milky quartz, have fascinated people for generations. Thought to be ancient artifacts from the Mesoamerican cultures, like the Aztecs or Mayans, these skulls vary in size and have sparked myths about mystical powers and ancient wisdom. Some believe they have healing properties, while others claim they can store knowledge or predict the future. However, modern analysis reveals that many were crafted in the 19th century, likely inspired by tales of lost civilizations and mystical relics. However, some people remain stubborn, believing that the remains might be a clue of the lost city of Atlantis, or proof that humans were not the first ones to set foot on pre-Columbian civilizations. Despite being debunked as genuine ancient artifacts, entitled as fake or an effort to fabricate ancient civilizations, the skulls continue to captivate imaginations worldwide. While the crystal skulls have lost their charm in front of scientists and researchers who found that the skulls contain marks made by the modern tools of the 1800s, they remain amused to an ordinary human. Even if it's fake, it's made up pre-Columbian allure was enough to keep the scientists invested for a few years, and it deserves some credit for it. The Shroud of Turin Up next, we have a piece of cloth, but this is no ordinary cloth. This sacred cloth allegedly once wrapped Jesus Christ. The Shroud of Turin is one of the world's most famous and debated religious relics. This linen cloth measures about 14 feet long, bears the faint image of a man who appears to have suffered crucifixion. It first surfaced in the historical records of the 14th century in France, and its origins have been a hot topic ever since. Is it a genuine relic from Jesus' time or a clever medieval forgery? This has been a hanging question for decades. When the Church of Lorraine first displayed the shroud, it gained a lot of popularity, and ultimately, the money flew in too. However, during this time, many people started questioning the real story behind the shroud. The curiosity peaked in 1389, when Pierre d'Arcis, a bishop of France, sent a message to the church's pope informing that a French artist had accepted responsibility for forging the shroud. The pope addressed the message by saying that the cloth might not have been the natural burial cloth of Jesus. However, the church will continue to display it as a relic. Additionally, carbon dating suggests it dates from the Middle Ages, but proponents argue that tests might have been flawed. The image on the shroud acts like a photographic negative, adding to its mystery. The Shroud of Turin is housed in a unique chapel in Turin, Italy, attracting millions of pilgrims and researchers. Despite extensive scientific scrutiny, the exact method of forming the image remains unknown, which has kept faith and skepticism alive until today. The Stone Spheres of Costa Rica Imagine walking through the jungle and stumbling upon giant stone marbles. The Stone Spheres of Costa Rica, known as Las Bolas, is a fascinating archaeological find and another story surrounding the pre-Columbian artifacts. Crafted by the Dikis culture between 600 and 1500 CE, these perfectly round stones are scattered across the landscape, ranging in size from a few inches to over 8 feet in diameter and weighing up to 15 tons. How did ancient people carve such precise shapes, and why? Some suggest they marked important locations or had astronomical significance. Others speculate they were symbols of power or status. Despite their relocation from original sites due to agricultural developments, the spheres are a souvenir of the Dikis people's skill and imagination. In 2014, they were designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, preserving their legacy and inviting people from all over the world to witness the skill and creativity of our forgotten ancestors. The Rongo Rongo Tablets the Rongo Rongo tablets prove that our ancestors had an attachment to creating scripts that no one could ever read. The story of this artifact is situated on Easter Island. The Rongo Rongo tablets initially appeared just like any other tablets. But here's the catch. The tablets are inscribed with a script that remains uncracked. The Rongo Rongo tablets discovered in the 19th century are covered in glyphs that resemble writing. These wooden tablets date back to the island's pre-European contact days possibly as early as the 13th century. 
The glyphs are carved in a unique style called Bustrophedon, where lines are read alternately from left to right and right to left. What stories do these mysterious symbols tell? Are they religious texts, historical records, or something entirely different? The island's loss of much of its culture makes these tablets even more mysterious. Some people believe this might have been the lost language of Easter Island, which was probably spoken widely before Europeans stepped into the area. Scholars continue to study Rongo Rongo, hoping to unlock its secrets and uncover the stories of Easter Island's people. However, they found these tablets mysteriously scribed with sharp objects, possibly shark teeth. Did the people of Easter Island have some connection or harmony with sharks? Or is this all a hoax set in action by some ancient prankster? Only time will tell. The Ulfbert Swords Lastly, let's look at a standard ancient tool, a sword. But we're talking about an advanced sword that was like the medieval equivalent of a high-tech gadget. The Ulfbert Swords, crafted between the 9th and 11th centuries, were legendary weapons favored by Viking warriors and European knights. These swords marked with the Ulfbert inscription were made from a high-quality crucible steel, making them more robust and flexible than other swords. The secret to their superior steel puzzled experts for years, as the technology to produce such metal wasn't considered available in Europe until centuries later. Some suggest the knowledge came from trade with the Middle East or Central Asia. The Ulfbert swords hint at trade and technological exchange that was considered impossible in the ancient world. Today, these legendary swords are seen, appreciated, and cherished not as a symbol of breaking the rules, but for the fantastic skill put into their making. Maybe sometimes, going against agreements results in legendary artifacts. 